Good morning, children, and welcome to our Sunday School time together today. I'm so glad that you have come. Well, I guess you can see what's on this table. I thought I'd bring in most of my crosses that I have. I have crosses that are used for decorations. I have crosses that are used for jewelry, necklaces, and a bracelet. And there's even a cross at the bottom of prayer beads. Can you find all the crosses that have a heart inside of them? Well, crosses used to make me feel very sad. I focused on how much Jesus hurt when he was on the cross, how much pain Jesus felt, how terribly Jesus suffered, and just how incredibly awful it was for Jesus to die on that cross in such a horrible manner. So that was a part of what a cross represented to me. But another part of what a cross means to us is that Jesus didn't stay dead. These crosses are all empty because as we know, Jesus came back to life because love is stronger than death. God's love is stronger than pain. God's love is stronger than the bad things that we sometimes do. God's love is stronger than everything. In fact, God's love is the most powerful force in the entire universe, which means that it is stronger than death. So that's another really, really important thing that the cross means for us today. Love wins. Love is stronger than death. Today, as we continue to learn more about the events in the last week of Jesus' life, something that we call Holy Week, we're going to hear a sad story called The Day Jesus Died. And then we're going to color some of our own crosses. But now, as we begin our time, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to live among us. Thank you for all the people in our lives who love us. Thank you for teaching us all about your love. And all of God's beloved children, let's all say amen together. Amen. Now Miss Joanne is going to lead us in singing some songs. Jesus loves me this I know. Joanna for reminding us that Jesus loves us. Before we hear our story today, let's remember what we've learned already about the last week of Jesus's life. What may seem a little bit confusing is that today, March 28th, is the day that we celebrate Palm Sunday. That was our first lesson on Holy Week clear back in February. Now what do you remember about Palm Sunday? 
Do you remember what Hosanna means? Hosanna, the words that the people were shouting when Jesus rode by them, means Jesus saves. Hosanna, Jesus saves. Now let's look at these pictures from the stories that we've heard the last couple of weeks. Are they in the right order? I don't think so, are they? We have a picture starting with Jesus with Pontius Pilate, then Jesus and the Last Supper, a picture of Jesus riding a donkey, and then on the bottom row, we have Judas kissing Jesus, a picture of Jesus carrying a cross, and the last picture is Jesus washing someone's foot. So, can you remember which order these events really took place in Jesus' last week here on earth, what we now call Holy Week? Well, let's try now to put these in the correct order. Which picture do you think comes first? Well, if you said Jesus riding the donkey because it's Palm Sunday and that was the first lesson and the first day of Holy Week, you are right. So let's move these down and put Jesus riding the donkey first. Now, what was the next thing that happened? It was on Holy Thursday, also known as Monday Thursday. Yes, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples to show them what it means to serve one another, to love one another. What, what else happened then on Holy Thursday? Was Jesus before Pontius Pilate? Was he carrying a cross? Well, the next event is actually the Last Supper, where Jesus broke the bread and shared the cup. Now we're left with these three. Which picture, which event do you think came next? What came afterwards? Well, after the disciples left their dinner, Jesus said he wanted to go pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. And the, some of the disciples fell asleep, right? Well, what happened? Yes, that's when Judas came, though, kissed Jesus on the cheek so that the soldiers would know who they came to arrest. So that is the next part, an event that happened on Holy Thursday. Well, we're down to two pictures, and I'm sure that you've already said that Jesus before Pontius Pilate was what we learned about last week. And then today, we will be learning about Jesus and the cross. So once again, here is a recap. Palm Sunday, Jesus washing the disciples' feet, the Last Supper, Judas betraying Jesus, Jesus before Pontius Pilate, and then Jesus carrying the cross. So now let's hear the story together. The day Jesus died. It was a very sad day when Jesus died. The soldiers who had arrested Jesus teased him for pretending to be a king. They took his clothes and put a king's purple cloak on him. They made a crown of vines with sharp thorns and put it on Jesus' head. Ouch! The soldiers made Jesus carry a heavy wooden cross. The cross was too heavy for him. Jesus fell and skinned his knees, and the cross tumbled to the ground. A man in the crowd carried the cross the rest of the way. The soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the cross. They raised Jesus' cross up on a hill between two other men. The other men were thieves, and they were being crucified too. One of the men was angry with Jesus. If you were a powerful king, 
Can't you save yourself? Why don't you save us too? The man spat at Jesus. But the other thief believed in Jesus. He shouted back, Don't you know who this is? This is God's son. He hasn't done anything wrong. We are being punished for our mistakes, but Jesus shouldn't be here. The man turned to Jesus and asked, Will you take me to heaven with you? Jesus looked at the man and loved him. Jesus told him, Yes, today we will be in heaven together. After a while, the world grew very dark, as if a terrible thunderstorm was coming. It was as if all of creation was crying because Jesus was about to die. Jesus was feeling all alone and prayed to see if God was still there. Of course, God never left Jesus. God was with him the whole time. Jesus looked at the crowd. He was so sad that people still didn't believe that he was God's son. He asked God to forgive them for killing him. The soldiers offered him some sour wine, but he didn't want to drink it. He was ready to die. Finally, Jesus had fought for long enough. He said, God, the work you gave me to do here is finished. He breathed a final, long, slow breath, and then he died. It is a sad story that we hear that Jesus died on the cross. And so now we're going to decorate our own crosses. So if you don't have this yet, ask your parents if they can get you the cross, a pair of scissors, or have your mom or dad cut out the cross for you, and colored pencils or crayons or markers or stickers or whatever else you would like to do to decorate your cross to help you remember how much Jesus loves you. I'll give you a minute or two to get those things together. Okay, so the first thing, you either want to cut out the cross or you're going to have your mom or dad or an older brother or sister cut out the cross for you. And while we're doing this, I'm going to ask some questions along the way for you to think about as we're working. So what is it that you think made Jesus so different from everybody else? And why do we still talk about Jesus over 2,000 years after he lived and walked on the earth? one of the most important things that Jesus did when he was on earth. Well, some of the things he did, he healed a lot of people. He was able to feed people, 5,000 people on an afternoon with two loaves of fish, two loaves of bread, and five fish. All right, so now I've cut out my cross. You might be faster than I am. And now just use whatever colors you like. Purple's my favorite. So I'm just gonna color mine purple, I think. And since I like to have hearts in my cross, I'm going to put a heart in the middle of mine. But you can decorate with flowers, with stickers, with anything that you would like to do. 
and you can finish this up after the lesson if you don't have time. There is my cross. Again, take all the time that you need, finish your cross, and maybe put them up somewhere so that you can always remember how much Jesus loves you. And now we're going to pray together the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. kids go get your eggs and today we're going to talk about egg number seven when jesus celebrated passover and this week your egg will start a party jesus and his disciples went to jerusalem to celebrate the holy time of passover as jesus arrived in the city large crowds of people cheered for him and shouted hosanna toss the confetti from your egg in your prayer area and shout hosanna as loudly as you can and then you can read your story from the Bible. Mark 11, chapter, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. Say a prayer of thanks for everything in your life that brings you joy. And say a prayer of thanks for Jesus. Thank you, Miss Marcia. Thank you, children, so much for joining together in our Sunday School lesson today. Always remember that Jesus loves you. Let us close in prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the lengths to which you went to show how much you love us. We thank you that you showed us that love is stronger than death, that love is stronger than everything, and that you are always with us. Help us to always remember how much we mean to you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Have a great week. We won't have a Sunday School lesson on Easter, but we will be back then the following Sunday. Have a blessed week.